Hi yogis, welcome to Yoga Flow. So we'll be working with two mats today in this crisscross pattern. If you don't have two yoga mats, that's fine. You can still do this practice with one. I tried it out with one and it was fine. For the most part, our right leg forward will be facing this way. That's my dark mat on top. And when we're left leg forward, we'll be facing this way. That's the lighter colored mat on the bottom. But I'll be cueing you. Uh, there will be an element of primal yoga in this class, so if you're not sure what that is, then welcome to your first introduction. It's just a moving in a slightly different way. Um, tends to be a little bit more on the hands, so we will get a nice wrist stretch going here. So other than that, maybe have a block handy at the front of one mat and a block at the other mat in case you need it. And we'll just start here in a seated position. So maybe starting kneeling or cross-legged. And then close your eyes. And if you like, if you're kneeling, you can sit on a block. The block will be between your feet. And your sit bones are right on top of the block. And we'll just get ourselves set, settled here. So this will be about an intermediate flow practice. So let's just rise the spine up tall here, soften the face, soften the eyes. Deepen the breath, you're breathing through the nose, smooth, even breaths. Just finding a moment or two to really sell your awareness deep within yourself. From that centered place that we then begin to move. So the thoughts are starting to slow down now. You're just more focused on the breath. And reducing any effort in the body right now in this seated position. Let's blink the eyes open, so we'll be facing towards uh, this direction. So you'll have the uh, two layers of cushion under your knees here. Let's begin to move through cat-cow. Inhale to arch, and exhale to round. And just Go forward and back like this a few more times. You're synchronizing this movement of your spine with your breath, rounding on the exhale, pulling the navel back, inhaling and arch shoulder blades down the back. One more time like this. Exhale, push the hands into the floor. And just come back to a neutral spine here. All right. So let's take the hands to point outwards, the fingers point out to the side. Your hands are going to be just a little bit wider, and you'll start to shift from side to side. So you're shifting over one wrist and then the other wrist. And then we're going to start to pick up the one hand that we're shifting towards. And then you lower it back down. So now we're just making this more of a fluid action, shifting side to side. So just starting to warm up into the wrists a little bit. Alternate lifting the heel of one hand and then the other. And then come back through center. Turn your fingers around so they point towards your knees. Make sure that your hands are about even with each other. And then with your fingers spread, just send your sit bones back as far as they're willing to go. You'll feel a big stretch here through the inner forearms. Mm. Come back up, sit back on your heels, interlace your fingers, and then just start to swivel through your wrists. So what I'm doing here is one wrist is moving forward and the other back one is back towards me, and then I switch and I'm circling them at the same time. So the wrist moves up and forward, and then the other one is moving up and forward. It's just little wrist circles, just getting into kind of lubricating the wrist joint, and then circle the other way. We'll probably be seeing this again once we start getting more weight bearing on the hands. And let's go for three, two, one, and just shake your hands out. All right, downward facing dog toes or curled under, heels are reaching back, fingers are spread. Mm. 
And if you need to here, alternate bending your knees, starting to lengthen out through the back of your legs. And then let's make the legs still here. Shift back forward and come onto all fours. Keep the toes curled under. Now hover both of your knees. Take the right knee in towards you. Take the right knee behind you. Take the right knee towards you. Lower the left knee. Right knee behind you. Shift forward. This is our scorpion push-up. Your right leg is still behind you. Press back up. Curl the back toes under. Lift the back knee. Inhale. Right leg up. Up into the sky. Three-legged dog. Open the hip up and bend the knee. This is our scorpion dog. So your right hip is higher than the left. And then let's straighten the legs, square the hips. And step your right foot forward between your hands. Stay up here in this high runner's lunge. Your back leg is straight. Fingertips on the floor under your shoulders. Reach the spine forward. Reach your left heel back. And then let's pivot a quarter turn. Feet face towards the left side of your mat. Still bent in the right knee, but this is a side lunge. And then shift into your other leg, bend the left knee, and then shift, sidle over to the right side, bend the right knee, and then over to the left, bend the left knee. All right. Come right through center, walk your hands forward, walk your feet back, downward dog. Let's shift forward, inhale, plank pose, exhale, lower the knees, come all the way down to your belly, roll the shoulders back, inhale to a cobra pose, exhale to all fours. Stay here on all fours. Curl your toes under, hover your knees. So this is a beast pose. We'll be seeing this pose again um, in a moment, in a few minutes. So let's lift the left leg up behind you. Look forward like you're trying to bring the foot to your head and then curl the knee under you. Lift the left leg up behind you. Lower the right knee down, shift forward, come into a scorpion push-up. Your left leg is still up, push back up, inhale. Lift the right knee again, curl the left knee under you, and then lift the left leg up high, straighten both legs, three-legged dog, lift the left hip, and bend the knee. Scorpion dog. And straighten the left leg, square the hips. Step the left foot between your hands. Stay here in this runner's lunge. So your back leg is straight, your fingertips are on the floor, you're reaching out long through the spine. You should feel like your spine is on a nice stretching rack here. Still breathing evenly through the nose. And then pivot a quarter turn, so now you're in a side lunge in the left knee. And then take it over to the right knee. Your hands are just walking you across the mat. You're just bending into one knee. And then the other, right knee now. Come back through center. Now walk your hands forward towards your top mat and walk your feet back. Downward facing dog. Shift forward to plank. You're starting to get the picture here of what we're doing, right? Lower your knees down. Come down to your belly. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, cobra pose. Keep the shoulders down. And then downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up behind you. Exhale, step the right foot between your hands. Lower your back knee down. Reach your arms up into the air on Janayasana. Hips are forward. Tailbone is down. Lift through your low belly. So those two actions of tailbone down, lower belly lifting, helps to just lengthen out your lumbar spine. And then the lower belly lifting is just stabilizing the lumbar spine is giving it some support. Now place the hands on your front thigh, pivot your left shin a quarter turn behind you, straighten your right leg out, reach your arms up, exhale side bend over the right leg, inhale come up, exhale left hand to the floor, circle your top arm around, your right foot stays down, inhale rise up, exhale over your right leg, inhale up, Exhale, left hand down, circle your top arm. Inhale up. Side bend over your right leg, last time here. Inhale, come up. 
Now lean halfway over to the left so your spine is in line with your right leg. If this is too much on your low back, bring the hands on your hips. Really push the right foot down. The farther your arms are away, reaching away from you, the more this is going to uh, challenge your core. But if it's too much for your low back, bring the hands in closer towards you. Just getting some strengthening going in the core. And then rise up through center and sit back over your left heel. Reach your arms forward. If this is too much for your left knee, you can instead have your hips up over the knee. Otherwise, hips are back over your heel. And you let the head rest down. It's like child's pose on the left side, except your right leg is lengthened out to the side. Let's shift on up, bring the shoulders over your wrists. Pick the right foot up, swing it high around behind you in a diagonal, and place the ball of the foot down. And then inhale, swing the leg high up and out to the right, tap the foot down. Swing it up high on the inhale, Exhale, tap the big toe behind you. Inhale, swing the leg high up. Exhale, tap the foot down to the right. Inhale, swing it up and around. Tap the foot behind you. Now place the whole ball of the right foot on the floor. The leg is at a diagonal behind you. And look over your left shoulder towards your left heel. Keep lifting through the right thigh bone and pushing out through the heel. You're feeling a lengthening now through the right side waist. Step your right foot back into a plank pose. Step your left foot back, plank pose, full vinyasa, lower chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog, shoulders back, collarbones wide. Exhale to downward facing dog. And breathe here. Inhale, your left leg rises behind you. Exhale, left foot steps forward, lower the right knee, inhale, the arms reach up. Anjaneyasana, hips are forward, tailbone down, lower belly lifts. Lift up through the heart even, lift up through the lower abdominal muscles, and then hands come onto this front leg here. Pivot your right shin or quarter turn behind you, and straighten your left leg directly out to the side, Really push the sole of that left foot down, arms out wide. Exhale, side bend over the left leg. Hmm, we've been here before. Inhale, come up. Exhale, right hand to the floor, circle through the top arm. Inhale, come up. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down to the right as you circle the top arm. Inhale, rise up to the left. Inhale, come up. Now we're just going to hold this partial side bend over to the right. So you're, oh, actually, it's not really a side bend. We're just leaning over to the right. We're keeping this left foot really plastered down on the floor. And again, your hands can be in closer towards you. If this is just too much load for your low back, your core will be working more the more your arms reach out away from you. Can you make your spine in, a in line with your left leg? One more breath, maybe some shaking going on here. Come on up right. Sink your hips back over your right heel, or you keep your hips high over the knee. If you don't want a deep bend in your knee, that's fine. If you have the hips back over the heel, can you let the head come down to the floor here? So it's a big stretch through the inner left thigh, and a bit through the low back. And then let's come back up onto hands and right knee. We're going to pick the left foot up, swing it high behind you, tap the big toe behind you at a diagonal. Inhale, leg swings high up and over to the left, tap the foot down. Inhale, right back up, swing it behind you, tap the toe, inhale, take it up. Exhale to the right one more time from side to side, take it behind you. Inhale, over to the left, and then last time. Up and back, and now you place the ball of the foot on the floor. Your back leg is at a diagonal behind you. And then you turn and look over your right shoulder. Look towards your back heel. Can you keep your back leg active? Lift up the thigh bone. We'll just create some more space through the outer left hip. 
and you're lengthening from the left hip through the waistline, even through the shoulder. Trying to move the shoulder and the hip on the left side away from each other. And then let's bring the left foot to the back of the mat in a plank pose. Step the right foot back, plank pose. Pause here. One more breath. Shift forward, inhale, lower chaturanga. Keep the head of the arm bones hovering. Upward facing dog. Inhale, collarbones wide. Exhale, downward facing dog. And just find your the even positioning of your feet and your hands. So one foot isn't forward of the other, one foot isn't turned out. Your feet are even, symmetrical. Shift forward to plank and as you do so, tap your right foot out to the side and come back to downward dog with your right foot back. Shift forward to plank, tap your left foot up to the side. Come back to downward dog. And then right foot taps out as you come into plank. Step the right foot back. Tap the left foot out, stay here. Keep the foot out to the left. You're going to bend the left knee and walk your hands over towards the foot. Press your back heel down, reach your arms forward. Your hands are probably off the mat here, that's fine. We're just using the mats as a general boundary guide, but really not being too strict about it. Okay, so now have your hands on either side of your left foot. Lift up your right leg and tuck the right knee behind the left. Bend both of your knees. Inhale, straighten your right leg up to standing splits. Exhale, tuck the right knee behind the left and lower your legs, lower your hips. Inhale, lift the right leg up, standing splits, one more. Exhale, tuck the right knee behind the left, bending your knees. Inhale, reach the right leg up. Now face forward towards the front of your mat over your left foot, and then step your right foot back. We're going to rise up to Crescent Warrior. Inhale, mm -hmm. arms reach up overhead. There we go. And just stay here for a breath or two. Really push down equally through the four corners of your front foot. Lower your hands to the floor. Straighten your front leg. Find your pyramid pose. Now, if the floor is just not feeling accessible to you or straightening your, straightening your front leg just doesn't feel like it's possible, then grab a block and place it inside your front foot and bring your hands onto the block. Mm. Bend your front knee. Step your left foot back to a lunge. Inhale here. Sorry, to a plank. <laughs> Step back to a plank. Shift forward. Shoulders are over the fingertips. Lower chaturanga. Bend your elbows. Don't let the shoulders slump down. Keep pulling them back. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Shoulders are back. Exhale to downward facing dog. Push down through the inner edges of your hands. Reach your heels back. Shift forward to plank. Tap your left foot out to the side. Inhale back to downward dog. Exhale to plank. Right foot taps out to the side. Take the foot back to down dog. Exhale, foot taps out to the left. Left foot to the left. Downward dog. And to plank, right foot taps out. Now keep the right foot here. And then walk your hands over to the right, bend the knee, and turn your right toes to face forward. And then lower your head down. Actually walk your hands just inside the front foot and a little bit forward. Now make yourself long. And yes, this is a strange lunge because you have the right toes turned out and your back leg is behind you. Now let's bring the hands on either side of the right foot. Lift your left leg up, standing splits. Exhale, bend both knees, tuck the left knee behind the right. Inhale, lift your left leg up, standing splits. Exhale, curl it in, tucking left knee behind. Inhale, reach up through the left leg. Exhale, tuck the knee behind you, stay here. Step the, the left foot to the back of your mat. You might need to re reposition your front foot so you can rise up to Crescent Warrior. Inhale, your arms reach up, stay here. Crescent Warrior. One more breath. 
touch your hands down. Straighten your front leg, pyramid pose. This is a variation of pyramid pose. In the traditional pose, we would have our back heel down and slightly angled in. Now, we, for this variation, we just have our legs wider and your left heel is reaching back. Try to move your outer right hip back. Remember, block under your hands if you need it. Shift forward to a lunge, step back to plank pose. Inhale here, and then shift down to chaturanga, bending the elbows, inhale to upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hmm. So you're probably wondering, where is this primal yoga that I mentioned? We're gonna do it now. So this is just a little dabbling in primal yoga. We're gonna do beast to crab crawls. So this is our beast pose. We're going to curl the from all fours. You curl the toes under and you hover the knees. Now we're going to end up facing up towards the ceiling. So to do that, we pick up the right foot, bring the right foot under you, and then your left arm around, and now you're facing up. You have your feet underneath your knees, your wrists under your shoulders. You have the fingers turned out a little bit. Let's lift the right leg up, your hips are still high, and then extend the right leg forward. Lift the leg up, keep the right leg straight, extend the leg forward. Lift it up again, extend the leg forward. Place the right foot down. Now we're gonna come back around to beast facing <laughs> kind of where your left hand is. So you're gonna start with the left leg. So you tuck the left leg under you, roll your right arm around, and now you're back into a beast pose. Extend the right leg behind you. Keep the left knee bent, just hovering a few inches off of the floor. The static holds are tricky. And then place the right foot down. You're gonna come back around into crab. That's where we face upwards. So start with your left leg. It comes under you and your right arm comes around. And now you're face up. And then we're gonna come back to beast, facing where we, where we started. So you start with your right leg. It comes under you as your left arm comes around and keep your knees hovering and we're in beast pose here. Okay, so now we'll go to the other side of the mat. So start with your left leg, pick up the foot, bring the knee under you to the right and your right arm comes around. Keep the left leg lifted, reach it up, keep the leg straight, reach the left leg forward, keep your hips high. Reach your left leg up, reach it forward. Reach it up, reach it forward. Place the left foot down. Take the right leg under you and your left arm around and we're back into beast pose. Extend the right leg back behind you. Keep the left knee bent and hovering off of the floor. This is really loading up the front leg. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna swing back around, starting with the right leg. It comes under you to the left, your left arm comes around. We're back into crab. Extend the right leg up, reach it forward. Reach the right leg straight up, reach it forward, hips are still high. Reach the right leg up, extend it forward, place the foot down. Left foot comes behind you, right arm comes around, back into beast, and extend your left leg back. Your right knee is bent and hovering a few inches off the floor. And then place the right foot down. We're still in beast, you still have the knees hovering. One more time through. Left knee, foot is going to raise, sorry, right foot is going to raise. Take the right leg under you and the left arm around. Lift the right leg up, keep the hips high, extend the leg forward. Lift the right leg up, extend it forward. Lift it up, extend it forward. Place the right foot down. Now your right arm comes around, your left leg comes under you. We're back in our beast, knees are hovering, left leg extends back behind. Your right knee is still bent, it's still hovering a few inches off the floor. And we're gonna unwind that. So left leg comes under, right arm comes up and over. Ex keep extending the left leg up. Send the left leg forward. Lift it up, send it forward. Lift it up, place the left foot down. Left arm comes around, right leg comes under you, and lower your knees down. So we'll finish up that sequence there. Just start to circle through your wrists. 
In primal yoga, they don't usually even use mats because <laughs> there are no boundaries in primal yoga. You're moving your limbs in all kinds of directions. Circle your wrists the other way. Fingers are interlaced, just circling around through the wrists. Okay, and then come back to downward facing dog. Let's do one more sequence through. So let's inhale the right leg up behind you. This will be more traditional yoga. Step the right foot between your hands. Lower your back heel, warrior two. So just check that the front heel lines up with the arch of the back foot. Relax the shoulders down. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, side angle pose. Inhale, come up right, warrior two. Exhale, stay here. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Come into side angle pose, stay here. Now you can do forearm to thigh, you can do hand to block, or hand to floor. Hand is just outside of your front foot. Reach out through your top arm. Push into the back foot. Half moon pose, top hand on the hip, shift forward into the right foot. Left leg reaches behind you. Left arm reaches up towards the ceiling. Firm your outer right hips, the outer glutes. Firm them up. And then you'll step the left foot back again. Straighten your front leg triangle pose. And I think I will use a block for this one. So block will be under the right hand if you need it. Or you can place the right hand higher up on the shin. Left arm is reaching up. Really push down through the four corners of both feet. It'll help you from tipping backward like I almost did just there. And then push down into your feet and let's rise all the way up, parallel your feet. Now we're gonna face the other mat. So let's fold this down, right down between the legs. Hands come between the feet. Fingers point forward, let the head relax down. Try to move the shoulders away from the ears. Lift the flesh of your legs. I'm going to make sure my block is out of the way here so that I don't kick it. You'll see in a moment. So look up and walk your hands forward now towards the new front of your mat. Lift up high onto the balls of your feet, bend your elbows, shift forward to a chaturanga, step your right foot back, step your left foot back, chaturanga, hold your chaturanga, hover the thighs, keep pressing the head of the arm bones back, and then upward facing dog, inhale, and downward facing dog. One more breath. Inhale, your left leg rises behind you. Exhale, left foot steps forward, back heel comes down. Warrior two, up and around. This time your left knee is bent. Lower the shoulders, soften them down. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, forearm to thigh, side angle pose. Reach out long through the top arm. Inhale back to warrior two, stay here. Exhale, just be in this pose. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, side angle pose. Now option is to bring the left hand down more towards the floor. Maybe on the floor or on a block. You can continue to do forearm to thigh if you prefer. And then reach out long through your top arm. Notice if you're struggling with the pose, can you find, find instead a friendship with the pose? And continue to breathe. Smooth and even. Bring the top hand on the hip. Half moon pose, step into the left foot, bring the right leg back behind you, and then reach the right arm up. You want the palm facing away from you, so it's facing towards the front plane of your body to find an external rotation in the arm. Flex the ankle of your right foot, spread the toes. Step the right foot back, triangle pose, block if you need it, otherwise hand is on the shin. If you are using the block, it's right under, on the floor, right under your shoulder. And then reach out long through your arms. Keep 
your back leg active. So lift the flesh of the inner thigh of your back leg. And then look down. Push down into the feet. Rise up. Parallel your feet back to the original front edge of your mat. And fold yourself down. Hands to the floor. Lower the crown of the head. Lift the flesh of your legs. Move the shoulder blades down your back. One more breath here. Lift your head. Walk your hands towards the front of your mat. So you're going to bend your knees a bit, lift your heels, shift forward coming into a chaturanga. You can either hop your feet back or step your feet back to chaturanga. Hold this for one more breath. Don't let the shoulders slump down. Upward facing dog, shoulders back. Downward facing dog. And there you go. Good job. Breathe nice and even. Since we can, we'll throw a little Pilates sequence into this. So shift forward to plank, lower your knees down, and lower down onto your forearms coming into Sphinx Pose. This is lately one of my favorite Pilates sequences because it works the obliques. You may be wondering why I like that. I, I question that too, I'm not sure. I just love working the obliques. Take your elbows a little bit wider and a little bit more forward so your forearms are gonna angle in. So this is also a little bit of a primal sequence too. It starts off primal, ends with a little Pilates. I like to mix it all up. So let's bend the right knee. Push into the right hand, roll to the left hip, and tap the right toes behind you. And then roll your hips back down. Bend the left knee. So these are scorpion rolls. Bend the left knee. Push into the left hand. Roll onto the right hip and tap the left foot to the floor behind you. This should feel kind of good. Kind of releases the low back. So let's do it again. Bend the right knee. Push into the right hand. Roll to the left and tap the right foot behind you. And roll yourself back down. Bend the left knee. Push into the left hand, roll to the right, and tap the foot behind you. And roll back down. Okay, here's what we're going to add on. So bend the right knee. Roll over to the left, and then straighten your legs towards the back of your mat. So your legs are in a long line with your spine. Your left shoulder is just under you. And then hover your legs up off the floor. They probably won't come up very high, and you'll already feel your obliques on this top waist starting to activate. So let's lift the top leg up, keep it straight, and lower the leg down. You're keeping the kneecap and the toes pointed forward. Lift the top leg. You're still hovering the bottom leg. Lower the top leg down. Lift the top leg up. Lower it down. Now lift the top leg. Lift the bottom leg up. Lower the bottom leg. Lower the top leg. Try not to roll too far on back onto the butt. Lift the top leg. Lift the bottom leg. You're still on the left hip. Lower the bottom leg. Lower the top leg. One more like this. Lift the top leg, lift the bottom leg. Lower the bottom leg, lower the top leg. Now lift the top leg up. We're just gonna lift and lower the bottom leg, so bring it up. Lower it down, but don't bring the leg all the way down. Let it hover. Lift the bottom leg up. Lower it down, you're still right on the side of the hip. Lift the bottom leg up. Lower it down. Lower the top leg. Roll back down onto your belly. Bend the left knee. Push into the left hand, roll onto the right hip, tap the foot behind you, and then straighten your legs towards the back of your mat. So you have this right shoulder just under you, and you can use the left hand for a little bit of support. Hover both of your legs up off of the floor. Lift your top leg up three times. Lower it down, the kneecap is pointing forward. Lift the top leg. Lower it down one more time, lift it. Lower it down, don't slump into the right shoulder. Lift the top leg, lift the bottom leg. Hmm. Lower the bottom, lower the top. Lift the top leg, lift the bottom leg. That's harder. <laughs> lower the bottom leg, lower the top leg. Keep the leg straight. Lift the top leg, lift the bottom leg. Hmm. Lower and lower. Now lift the top leg, keep it up. Just lift and lower the bottom leg. And lift it for two. And for three, take the leg down, take your top leg down, roll back down into Sphinx Pose. Now we'll do a proper Sphinx. 
Elbows are under the shoulders, forearms are parallel, and broaden across the front of the chest. And just to balance out our core work, because we got some oblique work there, we'll also get some front of the core. I'm just going to scoot my back, scoot myself back a little bit. So, but I'm more, my forearms are more on the mat. Now curl your toes under, lift your navel, lift your hips, lift your thighs, and then lift your knees, forearm plank. Keep the breath even, and if you can find an ujjayi breath, where you constrict the back of the throat and you breathe through the nose, it'll make a whispering sound that will help with buoyancy. Imagine your body is just light. And let's go for five, four, three, two, one lower down and lift up the heart into sphinx and if you want a little bit more of a release for your abdominal muscles bring your hands a little wider and straighten your arms coming into seal pose just stretching out through the abdominals and lower yourself on down okay reach or bring the left forearm under you, reach back for the right foot, and just go for a quad stretch since we're here. So I've got the ankle flexed and the toes are spread of the right foot and reach the right kneecap back. Keep pulling the heel in closer towards the sit bone. And then let's release the right foot and switch sides. Reach back for your left foot. Flex the ankle, spread the toes. I just, I wanna make sure that your ankle stays in a safe position. So I'm having you activate the foot. And then we're gonna reach the kneecap back and pull the heel down towards the sit bone more. Spread the toes. And then let's release that side. Come on up to all fours. And we'll cross the right thigh in front of the left, widen your shins out, we're coming into a cow face pose, and then sit back onto your sit bones. So we have the right knee on top of the left, and your shins are kind of moving out into a v-shape, sort of wide apart, and if you're already feeling quite a lot and it's too much, and if you find just a simple cross-legged position and lean your upper body forward a little bit, you'll get a similar sensation. It's a stretch in the outer hips. This is a pretty big outer hip stretch. So if it's too much, I'll just modify here. You'll just come to a simple cross leg and lean forward and then you'll feel what you need to feel in your outer hips. Okay? Otherwise, the deeper variation, you have one leg over, one leg under, your knees are stacked. Your shins are wide. You can stay upright if that's enough for you, or you start to hinge your spine forward. Gomukhasana, cow face pose. Mm. Let's do one more breath here. We'll just take it to a simple twist. So let's bring the right knee to point up more and the foot comes in closer. And your left leg can stay right where it is. It's kind of, you've got the heel, left heel to the right hip. And then we'll twist to the right, bring the right hand behind you. Root the sit bones down, lift your spine up and twist. And don't force the twist to happen. It's really more using your core muscles to move you into the twist rather than using your top arm here to yank you into the twist. This arm is really just stabilizing you, but it's not forcing you into the twist. So think more of getting length. Push the sit bones down, reach up through the crown of the head. You don't have to force your head to turn aggressively either. Just find a comfortable position for your head. And then let's come back through center. So we'll just lean back and wind the legs up the other way. So the left, the right leg is under and the left leg is over. 
I'm trying to stack one knee on top of the other and the shins are moving out wide apart. And I can tell this side is feeling pretty stiff today, so I might not fold forward quite as much. You're just staying up right here. If this is enough for you, stay here. If you're feeling like it's it's too much, remember your um, your option is just to cross up the shins, the feet on the floor, hinge forward. You'll feel this in the hips if your hips are tight. Okay. Otherwise, cow face pose. Lengthen up right through the spine, maybe start to take it forward. If you're not feeling much, consider bringing this bottom shin out a little bit, and that might make your eyes a little bit bigger. So just leaning forward until you found your maximum stretch. You might feel this in the IT bands as well, which is this really tough sinewy um, ligament tendon probably a tendon, between the outer knee and the outer hip. Hmm. And then let's rise up, right? That one felt intense for me on that side. So twist, we adjust mostly the, the top leg. Bring the foot in closer and the knee's gonna point up towards your chin. You might wanna tuck your bottom heel in so it's right near your outer left hip. Left hand comes behind you, right arm hooks to the knee. Push the sit bones down, reach the spine up. We wanna to try to find equal length through the left and the right side of the spine. So reach up tall through the crown of the head, and then we'll twist to the left. Just find a comfortable position for the head. You don't have to crane your chin to go over the shoulder. Just whatever works for you is fine. Can you keep pushing the sole of your left foot down? Added benefit is a little bit more of an outer hip stretch. And then let's come back through center, unwind your legs. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and lay down onto the back. And from here, we'll just bend the knees and hug them in towards us. And happy baby with just your right foot holding the right foot in your left in your right hand extend your left leg forward and your left arm back so you're getting long on the left side as your right side is in happy baby just holding the outer edge of the right foot use your hand to press the knee down towards the armpit reach out longer through the left side from the wrist through the ankle you're reaching long And then you'll bring the left side in, release the right side down. Half happy baby, hold on to the outer edge of the left foot. Extend the right leg forward and the right arm back. Flex the ankle of the left foot. Use the hand to push the knee down towards the armpit. It may not touch and that's fine. Mine don't actually touch, it's just the direction that the leg is going. And then reach out longer through the right side. One more breath here. And let's bring the right foot in and lower the left foot down. Just pause here for a moment, arms out to the side. Just one more little release for the low back. Just let your legs sway from side to side, even your feet. You're rolling onto the edges of your feet. Your knees are going side to side. And then can you synchronize this with your breath? So as you inhale, the knees come up. As you exhale, knees come down to the side. Arms are out wide. Just close your eyes here. And bring attention to your low back and just notice how it feels, just getting this swaying action. One more time to each side. Next time you've finished up with your knees to the left, bring your knees to point up and extend your legs forward, find your Shavasana. Arms are by your side and then you angle them out a little bit. Turn the palms up. 
And as you completely relax through the hips and the legs, your toes will naturally turn out away from the midline. If you kept a new jai breath going throughout the whole practice, that's great, but right now, let the ujjayi go. Just let the breath be silent and continuous. your bones down to the floor. Soften through the abdominal organs. Let your skull be completely supported by the floor beneath you. to the floor, knees are bent, roll over to one side, and press yourself on up to seated. Hands together at the heart, close your eyes, and bow your head, and lift your gaze. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that crisscross yoga flow, and I see, I'll see you again soon. Namaste.